So we get move on past the boring stuff and all the stuff that we've probably heard a million times at each of our medical schools and all those different things. And how do we start using these resources? So I like to use Twitter as kind of an example. I think it's the easiest place to start. It allows for easy discovery. Um, it links to larger resources, so things like websites, videos, um, podcasts, all those sort of things. You can easily consume and curate these resources, so you can kind of put them together in a format that allows you to look at them later. And I think it's the easiest one to kind of silo professionally, like I talked about before. So in terms of FOMED, I think there's kind of a hierarchy of how you can participate in it. And not everyone's comfortable at all levels, right? So it's real easy, I think, to start. And I, I encourage all of you to at least consume, okay? So I'll, I encourage you to go out and actually kind of look for people, uh, resources, other, um, other groups that are going to share information that you're interested in um, or that are going to enhance your education. We'll get into a little bit of that uh, as well. So along with consumption is easily, cu easily curatable. So you can have, um, right within Twitter, we'll go over some strategies for this, but you can just like some things. It'll save it for later use. There's some other apps that we can talk about as well. But this allows you to essentially... Um, put resources together for your own review and also share them at a later time, and we'll get into that more. Comment, so discussion, it's a free open space that kind of destroys hierarchy. So you can access um, you know, the chair of whatever department that's on Twitter and have a frank conversation about some individual items. And this is kind of where FOMED really the power and starts coming in, and we'll get into that more as well. You can create, so you can be a part of creating some of these resources. And so let's dive into some of the individual items here and talk about consumption. This is uh, just a screenshot from my, um, from my mobile Twitter client. And the easiest way to kind of start doing this is, um, how many people have used Twitter? Just as a quick raise of hands. So Twitter, you've, it's interesting, Twitter, not a hugely popular, it is a hugely popular social media platform that a lot of people have heard of, but when you talk, about, talk to individuals about how, how many people are actually using it, the user base is a little bit less than you would think. Um, this is a great place to kind of start. Um, you'll notice that there's a number of people, if you were just to search FOMED, um, you would get um, up in the search bar of your, your mobile client or, any, or your, your browser, it would kind of give you a list of Twitter um, people that you could particularly follow. So there are people in groups, and this at designation just means that that's an individual or, or a particular group. And what you can do is basically say, I'm going to follow, not Mafia Games, I don't, I don't even know why that's there. But let's say you, you like Casey Parker. He's an EM doc, um, I think, in England. And you hit follow. Now, anytime Casey follows something, it's going to show up in my feed. Okay? But in addition to that, anybody that Casey follows, anything that he likes or wants to share, it's also going to show up in your feed. So the real cool part about Twitter is, is that content or things that you wouldn't otherwise like seek, um, things that you think are boring or you wouldn't otherwise want to self-educate on or go seek, they're going to be pushed into your, into your um, Twitter feed, and it allows you a kind of a passive way to go, oh, yeah, hey, I don't know a lot about that. Maybe I should look that resource up. Um, the, other, the, other, the other last way, and this is the big one here, is use of hashtags. And so hashtags are like almost like a stamp. They're um, kind of a category for whatever the content is that's shared on Twitter. And so people will use the term hashtag, and I'm sure you guys have all seen the Justin Timberlake and Jimmy Fallon stuff on hashtags. Um, but essentially the big ones are like FOMED, um, MedEd, and then specialty-specific ones like EMConf. And it's really easy to kind of discover these once you kind of get into Twitter, you start using it for like the first five minutes, you'll start noticing um, some of these hashtags and things that you can kind of consume and follow along with. Um, so here's an example of some of the tweets, and you'll kind of notice and see how these actually typically go. And so one of the greatest ways to kind of discover other people is start following maybe five, six people that you know of within your profession. And start looking at their tweets, and you start seeing, you know, oh, hey, this is a person, foam starter, you know, boring EM, they're a resource, um, here's a hashtag. And so if you start clicking on these individually, it'll just start expanding this list um, of things you can add to your, to your timeline. So it just allows you to kind of start accumulating people, play, uh, groups, and, and other hashtag resources to allow you to follow and start consuming. Does that make sense? All right. So here's kind of an example of the web browser stuff. And one of the other things that gets done is like during conferences, this is an example of a social media. It doesn't project all that well. Um, but this is like an infographic that someone shared or their notes from their iPad that they shared from a, a conference. And that just gets blown up and shown on there. And then they link to other, uh, other people that they want that targeted to. Just another way to kind of further expand who you're consuming. So in terms of curation, um, just in, in Twitter and of itself, there are these little hearts. And they used to be stars, but now they're hearts. And you can just hit those, and then there's, a, there's a, a thing on your mobile device that just says likes. You click on that, and everything you've ever liked, I have a lot of likes, um, will just be thrown into this category. And so if you want to, let's say you're like, you know, 
running from one patient to the next, you just look at your Twitter feed and you're like, oh, that's something really cool. I want to read that later. Hit the heart button and then you can come back to it at another time. So super simple to review later. You can share these items later and then you can make recommendations to other people at, at a later time as well. Another mobile app that I really like is called Pocket. I think it used to be called Instapaper. I'm not 100% sure, but um, this is a great thing. You can, any, it doesn't have to just be Twitter, any social media or web browser, you can literally just copy and paste in the URL, and then at a later time you just come back to it and it's all saved in, in this one particular uh, format. And so this is just another app that you can use utilizing Twitter, that sort of thing, to kind of save the resources that you discover, the format resources that you discover. Um, all right, so let's move on to comment. So um, as a platform to discussion, you get a chance to kind of engage and offer insights or feedback to other people that are sharing as well. And so this is kind of where the power of foam really comes in. It's not just like, oh, hey, here's this great like, book report on you know, the auto anchor rules. It's, oh, yeah, those are the auto anchor rules. And, oh, did you hear about this other new you know, decision-making rule system? Or, yeah, there was this study that came out that showed you know, X, Y, Z about radiologic interpretation. And so it gives you the ability to kind of augment and um, continue to further the resource and, and even be critical of what's, what's up there. Um, here you'll notice um, kind of some particular things about, you know, someone had some comments about EKGs. Um, and Amal Matu, for those of you that don't know, he's kind of like a big guy in emergency medicine and emergency cardiology. And it's one of the most, I've met him personally on a couple different occasions. He's one of the most nice, approachable men. But otherwise, I'd have to know his email address. I might get lost in his inbox if I had a specific question. I can literally just type a question to Twitter, hit at Amal Matu, and then typically within you know, a couple hours, whenever he's on it next, he can hit me back with whatever resources that he thinks are cool um, or a specific answer to a question. So it completely destroys having to search out or seek out some of the finer details in how to get a hold of people. So it just like completely destroys the hierarchy of medical education or um, access to these sort of resources. Um, another cool thing, so this is Academic Life in Emergency Medicine. This is one of the, the preeminent uh, medical education blogs. And so they have um, they have an open peer review process. So in addition to so in addition to just comments, this uh, there was a, a resident that created this um, blog post. There's an ex uh, copy copy editor that goes through. You can see all the changes that they had recommended. There's an expert reviewer. So the expert reviewer goes through this migraine topic and goes, yeah, these are the great things you highlighted. Here's some additional things to consider. And there's a comment section. So EM docs or residents or students that have specific questions, criticisms, whatever, they can all share these things. So an open discussion platform. Um, it's incredibly powerful when you talk about a lot of these different things. As complex as these, you know, a lot of these topics are, it's good to have, a, uh, you know, have broad contextual information and a wide range of practice patterns that kind of get brought forward in each of these. It really, it, it's a lot to dig through, right? But it's also something that you know, a book can't match this, right? Um, a lecture can't match this. This is incredibly valuable. And I can go back and search this later um, if it's something that it, you know, particularly uh, how, um, if it has to do with like, patient care, that sort of thing. So the, 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 the final level in this participation, FOMED kind of participation thing is creation. And this is kind of the ultimate, right? So not everyone's going to get here. Not everyone's going to want to have, you know, have the, has the time to do these things. But there's different ways you can actually create. So you can just microblog. You can just share something on Twitter, something you found interesting at a conference, or a particular pearl that you learned from one of your staff where you were working, or another senior resident. Um, you can have coached and peer review posts. So maybe you contact one of these websites and say, hey, I'd like to, I ran into this clinical question. I want to write a blog post about it. And they'll coach you through that process. So LEM, uh, Canadium, or um, Boring EM, they all have those processes. And I'm sure in other specialties, it's the same way. Um, you can create infographics. So this is kind of like the latest, coolest kind of thing that's out there is talking about design and graphics and education. And uh, you can essentially create, um, you can open up your PowerPoint and create a cool you know, logo of something, an educational topic, and just share it on Twitter. That's another easy way that you can create. You can create videos as a, if you had more, um, you know, or podcasts, um, if you had more skills along those lines.